What is up? I am TJ. This is Uncommon, and so are you. Hey guys, we're doing an Uncommon Christmas. This has been pre-recorded. Uh, I'm out of the studio last two weeks of the year, but I wanted to give you something for Christmas. Here it's going to be December 24th, 2 p.m. And so we wanted to uh, take a moment to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Hope you have a wonderful uh, day tomorrow focusing on the birth of our Savior. And this week's uh, session is going to be focused on an uncommon Christmas. And so um, if you're new to Uncommon, each week we try to focus on um, a topic of being a husband, a dad, or a leader. And we encourage men to be them. And so uh, our topics range uh, accordingly, sometimes we even have a couple of miscellaneous pieces, but it's always from a man's point of view or from a man's encouragement, uh, you might want to say. So uh, be sure to tune in uh, weekly. Uh, you can visit us on our YouTube channel. We have over 175 videos, and I'm sure something will fit right where you are in life. So uh, the few things that we always talk about uh, to get going is some of the new things that are happening that maybe just uh, for this, this episode or this time of the year. And we do have um, our new line of design of clothes that are out right now for uh, Christmas and beyond. Hopefully you've gotten your Man of God swag already under the Christmas tree. You may not know about it yet, but hopefully uh, your wife or your kids uh, has purchased something for you and has wrapped it, and so you'll get a chance to experience that tomorrow, hopefully. Um, but I wanted to uh, mention that as well as our membership program. Uh, we'll be updating that after the first of the year with uh, some great new benefits. And we're starting a 90-day Bible reading plan on Uversion, first part of January, uh, to help with not only um, uh, connectivity, but also some discipleship. And so we're going to be doing a uh, ongoing piece throughout the weeks and a video component as well to maybe talk about some topics of that reading and then maybe even answer some questions. And what else? Let's see. Um, and so, like I said, this week we're talking about an uncommon Christmas. And so our 2020 Christmas may not be going the way we thought it would compared to previous years. In our minds, we always have that, maybe that Norman Rockwell kind of you know, playing on the toboggan out in the snow or around a fireplace, drinking hot chocolate, uh, maybe, you know, big dinners with family and friends, that type of stuff. And maybe this year it's a little bit different. But I wanted to take a moment to look at the story of the birth of Jesus in relationship to what we've been going through in 2020. And you may see some similarities. So the Christmas story is in Luke, the second chapter of Luke 1 through 20. And so if you have not read that recently, I highly suggest you take a moment to pause this and go read the story of the birth of Christ. But our first point is, so Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census. And so this is taken from scripture. And so the next few points here and there will be just my kind of twist on this. And so that may sound like uh, something you and I may drive down to the voting office or the local high school to take part in the census. Or these days you get it in the mail, you fill it out, mail it back, and that's it. 
Actually, 2020 was a census year. But I looked it up, and more than likely, it took Mary and Joseph between four and seven days to travel to Nazareth. That was their town. So it wasn't a very convenient thing. It was something that um, they were not expecting. It was required of them. So from a 2020 point of view, with our COVID restrictions, I don't know about you, but no one consulted me before they asked me to do things or uh, changes started to happen, uh, impacted my life. I noticed that Mary couldn't walk to Nazareth because she was pregnant. Seven days of walking, uh, unless you've taken a trip to Disney World, you probably don't have a perspective of steady walking for a number of days. Uh, it's quite the arduous journey, even in that human trap out in Florida. But she had to ride a donkey. Now, I don't know if you've ever ridden a horse before, but riding a horse for seven days is probably harder than you think, especially for someone who is pregnant. And more than likely, it was not a ride, as you and I think, galloping along. It was just walking, this donkey walking. And so that's probably why it took so long to get there, even on a donkey. From a 2020 perspective, you're thinking, well, how am I supposed to work? How are the kids supposed to go to school? You know, Mary and Joseph were being called to go to Nazareth. You know, it seemed like something they would have a hard time doing. That's not what I had in mind, not what I had planned for this trip. From a 2020 perspective, many of us have had to adapt to a virtual experience of um, socializing with people, whether it be uh, working from home, doing school from home. Uh, and if you're a parent, you're probably doing both of those. Uh, you are doing your job and then helping your children with school as well. The next thing I noticed was kind of obvious. Mary and Joseph were not expecting this. I'm sure they were about their own business when that decree came. And they didn't seem to have much of a choice but to comply even though she was pregnant. And so from a 2020 perspective, this is not what I had planned for my 2020 to be. I'm more than sure you would agree with that as well. And so you can see how this story is unfolding, some of these things were out of their control. We pick up on this story at the beginning of this decree, but you can see how they had to take part in this, even though they probably were not prepared for it. Now, I'm sure they had planned to have the baby at home, or maybe even when they got back from the trip. It, uh, scripture doesn't say how far along she was when they left on their trip. Scripture says, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. I wonder if they were, you know, every step of that donkey, they're like, okay, don't, don't let this happen on the way to Nazareth, right? I can see the title now, a funny thing happened on the way to Nazareth. Um, they're probably thinking, it would be great to get back home before you have the baby. So when they get there, they start to have the baby. Now, they didn't have a hospital. They didn't have an urgent care. To, or they didn't even have a minute clinic to hop into. They had to settle for a stable where cows and sheep and donkeys slept. Hardly how they planned to welcome Jesus into the world. 
I don't know of a single mom or dad that plans to have their child on the car ride over to the hospital. They're thinking they're going to get there. It doesn't always work that way. In 2020, things are different. I'm out of my element. What do you mean I have to work from home? How is my child supposed to do school from home? Again, they did not plan for this. We're going through something similar. We are not planning for certain things to happen in our 2020. So the baby is born. Now what? There are seven days of travel, probably double by now. If you've ever traveled with a child and without a child, you know with a child is definitely longer. So there are seven days of travel from home and nowhere to stay but the stable. Now, 2020 perspective, you know, the year has dragged along as if it's been five years worth of problems all crammed into one. And things may get worse before it gets better. But if you read verses 8 through 20, you'll see a lot of praise and glory happening. Even a mix, even going on with this uh, situation. And even after all that in verse 19 says, But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. There are going to be things that come out of this that's going to impact our lives forever. My family and I went through Hurricane Katrina back in 05, and I could vividly explain in detail what took place over that next two-year span, and even impacting uh, Uncommon. And so things are going to come out of this, good and bad. Hopefully we'll learn, we'll learn from the bad and leave it behind and apply it to the good. But with truth and grace, while 2020 may not have gone the way we wanted it to, and there may be still times of frustration, loss, fear, and anxiety, there is still hope. So Luke 2.11 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. And so it's good for us to keep a perspective in 2020. You know, sometimes we always, we think we're going through something that no one else can relate to. And as you can see in this small story, these two individuals experienced something that impacted their lives, out of their control, didn't go as planned, but yet went how God wanted it to. And there was great rejoicing at the birth of Christ. So don't lose hope. Don't give in. I can't tell you that 2021 is going to be rainbows and chocolate rivers, but I can tell you that there is hope. If you look at 2020 with the right perspective, with your eyes focused on Christ, it doesn't matter if you have to take a donkey to a town to have a baby in a stable or not. God will get that glory. I hope this message resonates with someone out there. I'm sure there are people going through things that are um, detrimental to a person's life, like death, loss, loneliness, anxiety. But there's not much we can do about that. And so I think you can focus your attention on Christ where he can have an impact on that. And so some of the devotions, articles, and videos we have for you, I'll be putting those in the description of this video. Our devotions will be all on version for your access, but 
were chosen. Uh, the first gift, wise men still seek him in a holy connection. The articles we've chosen is dads make holiday memories with kids. Get your good Samaritan game on and fathering the storm. And the videos on our YouTube channel are That Santa Suit Doesn't Fit, The Middle of the Mountain, and Hiding the Bad Spot. And like I said, all of those links will be put in the description of this video for you to visit. But again, I hope that you can take comfort that someone in the Bible has gone through something and we can read about it and see God's providence and power in that situation. It's no different today than it was in that stable. So I hope you guys, uh, this resonates with you. I hope it helps you get through some of these last days of 2020. Again, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. And if you're going to be something, be uncommon. Merry Christmas, guys. Love you.